Today on our show, the trolls are upset, but a woman is wonderful. Yeah, I know that came out weird, but all that and more, that's next on Nerdy Nomicon. I'm Robbie. And I'm Adrian. How are you this week? I am pretty good. Pretty good. Pretty How good. How are you? I am so fucking good. This has you, been a great week. You're always super positive. I am, man. I like to think, I, I try to make my positivity infectious. Like I was telling you, I think it was earlier tonight. I don't know. My my head's kind of a jumbled. Part of the reason I'm so fucking good is I'm like completely sleep deprived. But I try to make my positivity like some sort of like, Energy transfer disease, like an STD, man. Like, my positivity is like herpes. You can treat it, you can't kill it. Like, somebody will show up with particularly posit- powerful strain of douchebaggery, and, you know, they're trying to treat my positivity. But I just come back twice as harder, and I give them an infectious rash of giggles and smiles. That's the way I try to look at life. That's interesting that you get more energy when you're sleep-deprived, because when I'm sleep-deprived, I am a cranky motherfucker. I will, I do not put up with shit from anyone, and all I, I want to do back is and sleep. Forth. I go back and forth. I'm not going to lie. Sometimes I'm cranky, but I reach that point of sleep deprivation where it starts to become surreal, you know, and I almost feel like I'm living through a real world version of Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas. Like I'm walking around. We're in bad country. No, we're in the office. We're in the fucking Artful Gremlin studio. But this is bad country. No, this is a microphone. You're on crack. I'm going over there. And that was pretty much my interaction with my wife earlier, so there's that. She was on crack? No, she was saying that I was on crack. Oh, you were on crack. Yeah, not on crack, just slept (laughs) sleep-deprived. It's been a long week, a lot of shit to get done. I've been working on uh, quite a few projects. And on top of that, one of my personal heroes, Kevin Smith, was in town this weekend up here at Buffalo. Got to see him at Helium Nightclub. I had tickets for the later show. Uh, It's supposed to pop off at 10 o'clock. Ended up popping off at about 1040 because anybody that knows Kevin Smith knows he's a bit of a flibberty gibbet. He will ask him like a very simple yes or no question and he'll go on like a 20 minute rant and make, you know, every fucking minute is magical, but he, it's a long walk to get to a short answer. So his first show ended up going a little bit late. So he comes out on stage and he's like, I'm sorry about that, guys. As an apology, I'm just going to keep talking until they kick me off stage. So, in a show that was supposed to wrap up at right around midnight, at 2 a.m., I finally get home, um, finally lay down to go to sleep. The kid starts crying, so I get up and deal with him. Um, Got home at 2, got to sleep at about 2.30, and had to be up for work again at like 6, and the kid woke up like two or three times. So, I've been sleep deprived for a couple of days now. That's the worst. it, It ain't good. But, hey, I'm up anyway. Got a lot of shit done. I will say, that's really cool of Kevin Smith to keep that going as long as he can. I feel really bad for the people who had to work that show. They're like, like oh, ma- maybe, oh, maybe I'll get off that early. Show. <laughs> and they're like, oh, no, I'm, gonna have to, I'm staying until well after when I was expecting to leave. Right. So, but it's, you know, it's that's the biz. You get used to it. I only say that because I work in events, so... I've true. had situations very, like that where it's like, true. get off stage. I want to go home. Get off stage, please. I mean, it, And it was kind of weird, too, because you almost feel that way. Like, the responsible part of my head, so, you know, about 2% of my being was like, I have to work tomorrow. Please don't call on somebody else to ask another question. I know I'm not next in line. It's not going to be me. Please don't call on someone else. But, like, the other 98% of me is... Come on, keep talking. Oh my God, I'm in the presence of greatness here. I'm next to my fucking hero, fucking director, writer, podcasting god. I mean, truth be known, I wouldn't be a podcaster if I wasn't a fan of Kevin Smith because I almost feel like he cracked the code and he broke down exactly what the power and positivity of podcasting can be. So it wasn't until I started listening to his shows and I'm like, wait a minute, this counts as artistic expression? I can just sit here with my friends and talk about nonsense and I have the ability to tell fictional stories in auditory format. 
Like, I don't need to write it and hope that somebody picks up a book or make a film for a fuck ton of dollars, potentially go in debt and have nobody see it. I can literally just sit down at a microphone and, like, do this and this and this. That counts? And turns out it does. So, I mean, it, I owe so much of my being and so much of my motivation to Kevin Smith. I mean, his movies touched me in a very, very deep way. And I'm not talking like he, his movies reached through the television poltergeist style and touched me in my plop plop. No, I'm just talking metaphorically speaking. I mean, his films like Chasing Amy helped me with my relationships as I was going through relationships and almost kind of allowed me to not make certain rite of passage mistakes or hurtful life-changing events before it was too late. Uh, Dogma, I mean, that movie became my fucking religion for the longest times. It reaffirmed or rather restructured my entire faith style because nobody had ever broken down religion in a context like that to where a young stoner brain could understand complex narration like that. I mean, I came from a town where relation where religion was black and white. It's this, it's this, it's this. There's no humor involved in it. There's no thinking involved in it. You will do what we tell you. This is what the word means. And I'd never really been raised in a in an area where you question things like that. So, I mean, his his movies alone touched me in a very profound way. And once he started up his podcasting company, Smodco, it drove me in different ways, a, a way to get started reaching an audience and get started, you know, expressing myself to people, not just around the country, but around the world in a very easy way. And not to say that podcasting itself is easy per se, but it's, it's something that anybody could do if they really had the drive. You know, I mean, if you spend a couple of days researching what goes into it and you've got, you know, a couple of hundred dollars to get started, anyone could be a podcaster. You know, it's just a matter of finding your audience and when I listened to his shows, it just kind of clicked with me and I, I hit the ground running and I never turned back. And honestly, if, if I did not want to become a podcaster, if I did not make that jump, you and I never would have met. We would never would have become friends. We never would have become besties. <laughs> Best friends. We've never, Best friends. never seen each other. Yeah, we've never met in real life. That's no. true. That is absolutely true, Agent Steve. Thank you, Internet. <laughs> Thank you, Kevin Smith. Uh, you are one of the reasons I am so sleep deprived, but hey, I had a great fucking time at the show. Uh, how about we get this show started in earnest, man? Um, I've got a listener email that I want to start off the show with. Okay. Uh, the very the only thing that I want to bring up on this email, uh, it's from a guy named Eric. So, hi, Eric. I'm reading your email online, or yep. rather just one section of the email online because I did respond to you earlier. Real quick. Uh, is it yes. Eric with a C or Eric with a K? It's Eric with a C. Oof, you can't trust Eric's with C's. Well, I may not be able to trust him, but he did have a good question. Uh, why do I keep calling Adrian, Adrian Steve? What is up with that? Why do you keep calling Adrian, Adrian Steve? Well, what is up thing, with that? Well, for one thing, that is your name. That is my name. Yep, Steve is your last name. And the reason I keep referring to you as Adrian Steve is because I am fucking jealous. You're one of those motherfuckers that has a comic book name. Like, Bruce Wayne and stuff like that. You know what I mean? You've got two first names. I've always loved that. Me, I'm Robbie Palmer. P-A-L-M-E-R. I have one of the dumpiest last names of all fucking time. You know, back in the day, people's last names used to be their profession. So, a guy named Joe Cobbler, generally speaking, was a cobbler. Thomas Baker, he's a guy that made your bread, you know? Uh, Jimmy Aglet, he would be the guy that puts the little plastic things at the end of your shoelaces. I, I heard well, you open I, your mouth. You were going to bring up John Hancock, weren't you? No, I'm just laughing because I'm wondering what your family must have done to get that name. I have no fucking idea, but I'm pretty sure it was in the same business as John Hancock. <laughs> You know, maybe the Hancocks are over there going, Oh, God, I have no idea over there. And the Palmers are just like, I'm going to wipe it right here. I'm going to palm you. I'm palming you. Actually, I looked it up. It has something to do with Palm Sunday, but I don't know. I like my version better. Or even like palm trees. You'd be the person palm who trees, plants maybe. palm trees. I don't know. My heritage is Italian. Be... So, Are there palm trees in <laughs> Italy? 
anywhere near the, the coast, maybe? I don't know. Maybe. I've never been. Maybe you just gave hand jobs to trees. Who knows? That's possible. That's in my mind. That's what's happening. Although, admittedly, I do want to know what the profession of Steve is. Adrian Steve was your ancestors like concubines to a dude named Steve. Or did it used to be off Steve kind of like in a handmaiden's tale? And you're like Adrian of Steve. I, I am. No I am idea. him. I, mean, I am no he clue. that belongs to Steve. I think like, it was it was something else, and they couldn't pronounce it when my ancestors came to this country, I believe. So they're just like, eh, Steve. They just, <laughs> I'm pretty sure. I'm actually about 90% sure that that so, is what happened. So your last name was anglicized back in the day. Yeah, it was probably like... And they gave you the most white bread name ever. It's like, I can't pronounce this gobbledygook. Your last name is Steve, okay? Yeah. You're Bill Steve. But my name is Stefano. No, you're Steve. Yeah, I feel like they would let Stefano stay. It must have been something Fuck absolutely no. Stefano crazy. doesn't stay. Not in Trump's America. Stefano goes. You're Steve or you're nothing. Well, it's not like my ancestors are coming today. <laughs> Good point. Unless there's some sort of break in the space-time continuum. Maybe your parents were time travelers and they came back and they repopulated in the, the year 1950. I don't know. It's possible. Ancestry.com. We can sort this whole mess out. So, Eric, that is why I call Adrian Steve, Adrian Steve. I feel like Ancestry.com could just lie through their teeth to you and you would have no idea. I'm pretty sure they do. They just like I'm make pretty sure up. they just fucking lie. They're like, you're 35, 907th Cherokee. I was like, what? <laughs> How is that even possible? Just like a third of everybody, they're like, oh yeah, and you're... You're a little bit Asian. Yeah, Attila the Hun, he used to rape and pillage all the time. Uh, there's some sort of statistic that goes around that says that, like, a third to a quarter of Europe is, you know, in some way, shape, or form related to Attila the Hun. So you're one of those people when your ancestor came over. That's what happened. That has to be the best job, though, just making up fake shit about people. <laughs> who... It's like, imagine that's your job. And someone you don't like, like, signs up for ancestry, and you're just like, oh guess you're related to hitler (laughs) yeah somebody pisses you off on the submission form you're like fuck this guy you're hitler's cousin i love that that's what i would do (laughs) but i'm i'm an evil person so (laughs) um let's talk a little bit about evil man a couple of bits of news the first thing is i've been so excited for something for quite some time all right I've, i've had at least one person on this show that submitted a story into a contest to get picked up because of the show. But unfortunately, it is no more. Tales from the Crypt. TBS's version of Tales from the Crypt. Now, granted, it wasn't going to have John Kassir playing the Crypt Keeper anymore, but I was really looking forward to this. Tales from the Crypt is fucking dead. It's not happening. Not at all. Not even at all. So, Tales from the Crypt is dead. I'm sorry, guys. Eventually, we're going to get an anthology horror show up. You killed it before it even came into existence. That I is, did. That's an incredible Palmer curse right there. Yeah, the, the curse is real. Ha- hashtag the curse is real. Maybe, oh, maybe your ancestors were like gypsies <coughs> and they had the ability to kill people by like using their palms or something. That would make so much sense. It's like the worst remake of Thinner ever. Instead of the gypsy touching the chubby guys, she's like thinner. She touches some nerdy gun, she's like canceled. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> That's probably what happened. I, uh, to be honest with you, that is, that is probably the worst curse ever. You know, I could stand to lose a couple of pounds. Gypsies! Or, excuse me, that's politically incorrect. Roma people, come on up, put your hands on me, say the word thinner, just kind of, let me eat all the cake. Let me eat all the cake and pizza. Um, that would, I, I'd be fucking fine with that. I can stand to lose quite a few pounds. Canceled? Please stop. Somebody give me the antidote. Are there herbs I could take? Could I go into a GNC? Maybe take some blue corn flour, something like that, get rid of this curse? Because it, it's starting to affect things that aren't even coming out yet. I'm crushing the dreams of Manite Shyamalan. It's terrible, man. What would be but. the most poetic way that you'd have to get rid of that curse if we were to write this movie? So your curse is you, things, things that you love get canceled. Uh huh. What would be the most poetic way to do it? I feel like you would have to. You'd have to kill. Something Tank you my loved. own show. 
Oh, I would ooh. have yeah. I would have to create my own show with all the tropes that I've grown to love throughout my years on this earth. Okay, it's going to have sci-fi, it's going to have horror, there's going to be caped crusaders, there's going to be hot chicks, there's going to be good-looking dudes. So, I mean, Stephen Amell and Ryan Reynolds are immediately cast. Two of the men in this world that have remind me on a day-to-day basis that my sexuality is a moving target. <clears throat> and, and then I'm... And, and, and Adrian and Steve is yeah, the mad there we go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then I tank my own show. I, like, write myself into a corner on episode two. Like, I, I make episode two the worst abomination ever. So oh. it gets picked up, and everybody's exa- excited about the pilot. They're like, this is going to make us fucking billions. Everybody's going to tune into this. And then I just tank it. I like it. I would watch that That would be movie. the most poetic way. And then finally, as soon as I do that, and I crush the dreams of myself and my friends, my peers, the people that respected me and joined me in my adventures, I tank the careers of a couple of people that I greatly admire. But Firefly gets a second season. Oh, that's what I was going to say. You know what would happen? <laughs> is your, fans, your fans come and like assault you. There's like a riot. Your fans attack you. And like as you're dying in your hospital bed, it's like... You just see like news, Firefly renewed, and then you you pass. That'd be the end. <laughs> With the theme uh, during that whole end, it's the themes of uh, the ending theme from Requiem for a Dream. Na 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 na. I was thinking the sad Hulk walking away music from the TV show, but you know, oh my god, I love that even more. I love that even more because it's still stuff that I love, man. Oh, I love it. Then Lou Ferrigno smothers me with a pillow. That's the way to go. I agree. So, Tales from the Crypt is dead, man. Uh, I love to end promoting stuff with, you can't stop it. Unfortunately, they stopped it. Maybe I stopped it. Maybe it was the curse of the ball. <laughs> I don't know. It's gone away in a big, bad way. <laughs> it has in a big, bad way. Um, so on from something that's dead to something that's very much alive or ver- rather very much undead. Um, this summer, we're getting the first of the attempt at a relaunch of the Universal Monsters Cinematic Universe. We got The Mummy coming out starring Tom Cruise is Nick Matar. And uh, Sophia Patel, she's going to be playing the mummy. And I've got to be honest with you, this movie looks fucking great. I was going to say, it looks good. It really does. Now, a lot of people don't know this. Oh, God, I just quoted Trump. A lot of people don't know this, okay? But um, this is the second attempt to relaunch, or to rather launch the Universal Monsters Cinematic Universe, or the Dark Universe, as they're officially calling it. Uh, The first one was... Dracula Untold. And I'm, I'm relatively sure that when that movie came out, they're like, oh God, why didn't we start this with Dracula 2000? Because Dracula Untold, Jesus Christ. What an abortion of a movie. It you was so like bad. It? I hated it. I, I'm pretty sure I watched it. I thought it was okay. I do. I preferred Dracula 2000. I don't remember Dracula 2000, so I don't I really pre- have a lot to compare it to. I preferred Underworld 4. I don't think, <laughs> wait, which one's Underworld 4? I is have that no the one idea. where the dude is gone the entire time and it's like her yeah. and the kid? Yep, yeah, that's that the one. one was pretty lame. Oh, it was terrible. <laughs> I preferred waiting, that to wait Dracula till do, Untold. The death of Underworld will be, because they're just like taking one main character away and then bringing them back to the next movie. The death of Underworld, where is there no Kate Beckinsale? Then <laughs> no one will ever come back. <laughs> <laughs> She's the glue that holds it all together, man. Yep. So Universal Studios has started their extended universe. It's going to be called the Dark Universe. I go back and forth on that. I think it's kind of a cool title, but I'm like, really? Really? The Dark Universe? A bunch of things have already come, been uh, assembled for this. I mean, they're bringing it all together. Uh, Movies that are already in their list. Frankenstein, Bride of Frankenstein, Dracula, Creature from the Black Lagoon, Invisible Man, Jekyll and Hyde, and literally just announced within the last 24 hours, they're also going to be doing The Hunchback of Notre Dame and Phantom of the Opera. They've also announced that some of the characters in these movies are going to have potential spin-offs and side stories. So, you know what that means? This is going to suck. Pretty much. We're officially going to have Godzilla versus King Kong versus Igor versus Redfield. I would actually watch that. I'm not maybe you are Sadly, very, I think I would too. <laughs> you're probably You're probably super positive about this. 
I don't. Are they are they going to interact? Is that like, or are they just yes. redoing all the old movies? No, man, they're bringing up a whole shit ton of movies, and they are going to converge. At least that's the plan that I've been reading. They are going to have them converge, Avengers style. I was gonna so say, like, it's going to be like all the worst, team up. lamest Avengers ever. I know it's going to be the weirdest thing. There are a bunch of comic books that have had assemblages like this. Um, Fuck, there were a couple of comics. I can't remember their names off the top of my head. Um, I already brought up Kevin Smith, but uh, one of his, or uh, rather, a couple of his friends, Walt Flanagan and Brian Johnson, had a miniseries called War of the Undead, where they essentially followed that plot where the they assembled the monsters to like fight Nazis, which you know would be kind of cool. Uh, there was a movie that was in pre-production, and it's long since been canceled, where Dracula... Uh, leads a monster uprising to fight off zombies. So that's always a possibility. But yeah, they're all going to be converging in some sort of Avengers-style team-up. Or maybe a Civil War-style battle royale. I have no idea. But yeah, that's the plan. They're all going to be converging. So The Hunchback is going to be in the same movie as The Creature from the Black Lagoon, and Phantom's going to be in the same movie as Jekyll and Hyde. But it doesn't make any sense. Well, they managed to do it with House of Frankenstein... They had a new version of that on for a fuck ton of years. But it doesn't make any sense. I'm just trying to stay positive, bro. Oh, I've got the positivity going. Let me spread worst. it to you like herpes, bro. <laughs> no, you keep your herpes to yourself, please. <laughs> I'm going to sit here and be skeptical. The herpes is a metaphor. Metaphor for what now? The herpes is a metaphor for positivity. Oh. Put a little sunshine in your life. Put a little sunshine in your dark universe. Herpes positive? Herpes positive. Oh, I think uh, I'll pass. May- maybe this will make you feel a little bit better. I've already said we got Tom Cruise playing uh, Nick Murtar in The Mummy. Sophia Battelle playing The Mummy herself. We got Johnny Depp as the Invisible Man. <laughs> What's the point? <laughs> I don't know. Why don't you ask Kevin Bacon? Because I'm pretty sure that's the last time I <laughs> saw that game. That's what I was going to say. You should just get and Kevin interestingly Bacon. enough... He Kevin Bacon played the Invisible Man in that movie Hollow Man, and we yep. still saw his fucking pork. Can mm-hmm. Kevin Bacon never be in a movie where we don't at least see the silhouette of his pork? Seriously. No, that's in this contract. You Touché. didn't know that? I, apparently I did not. Uh, so Depp is the Invisible Man. We got Russell Crowe playing uh, Jekyll and the Hyde. Wolfman, rumored to be Dwayne the Rock Johnson. He can't be Wolfman because he's the Scorpion King. Oh, dude, those movies are retconned. They're gone. I all, all I want is Brendan Fraser to make a cameo somewhere in the cinematic universe. That's all I want, and I will be in. I will give you, not all my money, but until you earn my trust, I will give you some of my money and a touch of Adrian's money if you put Brendan Fraser in these movies. I would want to see Brendan Fraser, at least for a little bit. Right? Uh, you ready to be really confused about this as well? I'm already confused, but yes, go ahead. All right, the next movie on the list is going to be Bride of Frankenstein. Before Frankenstein. Before Frankenstein, we're getting the Bride of Frankenstein. Hashtag confused, hashtag feminism. Uh, And that is scheduled for release February 14th, 2019. And looks like we're getting Javier Bardem. And there are rumors that Bride of Frankenstein is going to be played, honestly, this is pretty perfect, by Angelina Jolie. Okay, interesting. Mm-hmm. Finally, in a role I can get behind because she's only held, had like two or three roles where I was actually like, yeah, she was good in that movie. I am not a huge Joe Lee fan whatsoever, but I would happily watch her as Bride of Frankenstein. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of hers either. It's not to say that she's bad, but I just don't. I've never been that impressed with what she's done. Not so much. Not so much at all. Uh, so that's what's happening, man. February 14th, 2019. Mark it on your calendars, guys, because that wait, is wait, going wait, to be. Wait. Bride of Frankenstein. Bride of Frankenstein. What's the date? February 14th, 2019. Fucking yes. Valentine's Day? That's Fucking exactly Valentine's right. Day? That's exactly Why? right. Why? Uh, let's see. If it's a horror movie, then, you know, your paramour can snuggle kind of close. I guess. that and It's the Bride of Frankenstein, so there's the romance element in there i don't fucking know adrian i didn't set this shit up i <laughs> no, report that i'm not even reporting the news i'm reacting to the news okay this shit's online for for god and man to read i'm just telling you what i'm seeing here i have to say none of it makes any sense i'm trying to break down that positivity <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to dose you with your your anti-herpes right now 
Can't be done. Can't be done. Uh, last bit of news, and this is only speculation. I just kind of wanted to get your reaction to this. There have been rumors about a video game called Starfield to be revealed at E3. Have you heard about this? I have not. Starfield is, again, this is all speculation and rumor, and I got this information and a couple of links about it from David Duncan over at Syntheholics, because he, like us, he's a gamer, man. He knows his shit. Um, so it is not confirmed, but... The rumor is Starfield is going to be a new game by Bethesda, and it is going to be bridging the gap between Fallout and Elder Scrolls. <coughs> so it's going to be a video game extended universe. And here's the thing. Fallout was the past. Elder Scrolls is the future. Starfield is going to bridge that gap. Okay. I, I don't know, know how I, I feel know about how that. Do it, but I don't I'll... know how I feel about it, but you know what? I'm in. Because yeah. I... I like Fallout. I really do. Um, Elder Scrolls have been relatively hit or miss, but for the most part, it's hit. You know, we're not talking Babe Ruth or anything like that, but I can do a little A-Rod. If I messed up that analogy and it's supposed to be the other way around, I apologize. I'm not into fucking baseball, okay? I'm just trying to broaden my metaphors because Adrian's over there. Ooh, your positivity is talking about STDs. I'm trying to broaden my metaphors here. I bet you would choose an A-Rod, you Palmer. <laughs> Well, I, I did, you Steve. <laughs> yeah, what you gonna do with that? I, nothing. I got fucking nothing. I got nothing. Aimed for the back of the net, and it ended up deflecting right off. Yeah, that's right. I brought hockey into it. We're bringing sports into this, man. Hit somebody. Um, Let's see. Last Starfield. little bit of... Yeah, oh, Starfield. That, well, that's, that's all it? I had to talk oh, about, Starfield. I thought you had more. No, that was it. So nice, it's just a rumor. Nice and sweet, and we get out of there. It's a little bit of a cookie. It's cookie news. We did it all for the cookie. We did it all for the cookie. Uh, less a little bit, and then we'll get into our uh, big review here. Wonder Woman has dropped, and the internet has gone fucking nuts. Trolls are abound. Like, shit's happening with this movie, and about 49% of the people in the world are all upset and mad about it. Really? You think it's that high? No. I really don't. I think the vast majority of people are celebrating everything to do with this movie. That or just really couldn't care less. But a bunch of people are really vocal about shit. Uh, for those that don't know, Wonder Woman just came out last week. I was there opening night. I saw it at the drive-in. I'll give you my review here in a few seconds after we talk about the the situation surrounding Wonder Woman. But it is a... I'm sorry. I'm going to go ahead and say it, a monumental, a momentous occasion for comic book movie fans. Because this is the first female starring superhero movie that we've had since the major craze has really come upon us. Um, even going back a ways, you know, we haven't had a star, a female starring and a female driven, let alone her gender right there in the fucking title. We haven't had that in quite, quite, quite some time. Um, Superhero craze really started out in about 2007, I believe. Maybe it was 2009, but 2007 sounds right, with uh, Iron Man. Um, that's when it all really began. We've had a lot of really cool female superheroes that have been on screen since then. You know, we've got fucking Black Widow. We've got Scarlet Witch. Over at Fox, even with X-Men Apocalypse, there was a lot wrong with that movie, but they did a lot of things right. Like, I realize I'm not in the majority, but I thought Olivia Munn was phenomenal as Psylocke. And I thought that their take of Storm was incredible. And they could do so much with at least a Storm standalone movie. But unfortunately, we keep getting Wolverines and Wolverines and Wolverines. Now, I will be fine... I understand that sometimes you got to slug through the bad to get to the good. And if we have to deal with X-Men Origins Wolverines and the Wolverine, two absolute abortions of movies, like absolutely fucking terrible movies, to get to Logan, I'll happily take it. Because I don't have to watch them again, but Logan, I'm going to be watching that to the day I die. That, mov that movie was one of the top four superhero movies of all time for me. Uh, so I'll take it, man. But there's so much more that you can do with these female movies. How Black Widow does not have her own flick already, I don't know. Scarlet Witch, interesting enough, I understand if you don't want to give her her own solo, but I really think that you should feature her more to build into that. Storm is another one. Storm could easily have her own spinoff movie. I mean, Adrian, you were talking about this with me earlier. Yeah, um, 
I think that one of the big things was uh, what are the underground? They're like mutants. Are they the Morlocks or something? Yeah, that sounds right. There's there's a, a story arc where she becomes like queen of the Morlocks, and uh, I think she retains that title for a, a large portion of the the comic books. Uh, but she, you know, she kind of rejoins the X Men at times, and then she's off, and so it's just queen by title. But yeah, I mean, there's there's a lot of stuff going on with her. Um, and her backstory, I think she's from Egypt and it was like a poor kid, like stealing things just to survive. So, I mean, like there's a lot of things that you could do with her. They just haven't really picked up on her. Um, and it's very unfortunate about that too, you know, because again, just to hammer the point home, there are so many interesting, cool, badass female superheroes that have already been introduced that you could do anything with. Yes, I know Captain Marvel is you know, cast, and it looks like it's going to happen. It's going to be starring Brie Larson. I'm thrilled about that, but they're not even shooting yet. So, I mean, that's a ways off. But now here we got Batman v Superman, Dawn of Justice, and who shows up but Gal Gadot playing Wonder Woman, and she's got the most badass fucking theme you've ever heard. And then the next thing you hear, Wonder Woman's getting her own solo film. And it's time for celebration. It's cause for celebration, because... And I'm saying this as a man, we've had kind of a monopoly on superhero movies for a fucking minute, okay? It's been a while, and they have not all been good, X-Men Origins Wolverine. It's about time that we get a female leading role, a female-driven role. And the women fans are right there saying the exact same thing. Because let me tell you, when I was in the drive-in, I saw this in the drive-in up on uh, Transit Road up here in Buffalo... My wife, as soon as the movie started, she burst into tears saying, I'm so happy. And I, I'm, I had the window down because it was a bit warm that night. And I'm hearing women just erupting in screams going, woohoo, and oh my god, this is amazing. And this is before frame one of the fucking movie. This, this is when it just said, and now your feature presentation. And the women were cheering for this movie. It is that big of a deal. You know, it, it's... Maybe as a man, I never realized how sexist the comic book movie cinematic universes actually are. And DC has changed that, and they changed it in a big bad way. And they changed it to such an extent that people are noticing this and trying to cap... Not necessarily capitalize, although it is capitalizing on it. They're trying to embrace that and celebrating it. Uh, Alamo Theater, for one, is having all female screenings of Wonder Woman. You got to be a woman to get in there. It's, and I tried to explain this to a couple of people. It's not about the exclusion of males. It's about the experience of of seeing the first in this era of superhero movies, seeing the first female starring superhero movie with nothing but women. It's about women empowerment. It's not about male deprivation. You know, it's not condemning guys. It's celebrating women. It's a celebration of womanhood. Hashtag feminism, and. I've got to be honest with you, man. I That does not offend one fucking bone or molecule in my body. Okay, if I walked into the theater in a couple of weeks to say, all right, I want one ticket to It Comes at Night, or It Only Comes at Night, whatever that horror movie's title is that looks fucking amazing, because best believe I'm going to be watching that movie. It looks so fucking good. And they're like, hey, all right, well, good, look, good news for you. It's only... It, the only people getting admitted today are fat, nerdy guys. So come on in, fat, nerdy guy. I'm, I'm not going to be pissed off or upset or being like, oh, well, that's, that's weightist or that's, that's sexist or anything like that. I'm going to be like, where's the fucking cake? I mean, I'm showing up there. I, I'm expecting a celebration out of this. I want pizza and I want cake. I'm like, oh, okay, I'll just find my way right in. I'm with my brethren. I don't see the exclusionariness of this at all. This movie's opening up on over 3,000 screens. And what, like 5 to 10 are doing this? I think more should do it. I mean, hell, in Alamo Theater in Austin, Texas alone, that screening sold out in less than an hour. They had to have more showtimes put in for this celebration for Wonder Woman. Because they sold out, dude. But not everybody sees it this way, unfortunately. As a matter of fact, we've got an email here uh, to the mayor of Austin. So we're going to do a little skit here. I'm going to read a very angry person on the internet 
and angry and Adrian is going to read the part of the mayor of Austin. Who will uh, be Steve Russian? Adler. Oh, Steve Adler is going to become Russian in this? He will be Russian. He is not Russian, but he will be for this. <laughs> well, then the voice I was going to use to do this won't make any sense because they would be all buddy buddies. So apparently I'm not doing a Trump impression on this. No, go ahead. See, See, that's the thing about this, okay? We live in the fucking era of Trump. We've got far more shit to worry about. Okay, Trump just got us out of the Paris uh, Accords. So essentially, he's trying to butt-rape Mother Earth while pouring sugar in each one of our gas tanks so that we have to drive coal-powered vehicles. And you're worried about this? You're worried about, oh no, there's an old woman screaming Wonder Woman. Really? Dude, seriously, go jerk off. (laughs) <laughs> Turn the channel. Well, I mean, if, if Come, we were to... eat a slice of pizza, you're going to feel so much better. I, I don't know. I just feel... It's weird. I feel mildly uncomfortable talking about it. Because as, as I was telling you before we started, it's just like, I, I think he's definitely going... He, his point is stupid, though. Like, the reason he's upset about it, and it, it's really dumb, it's, it's totally sexist. But I don't know. I just feel like... I feel like if, if there was a guys-only screening of a movie, there would be hell to pay and people picketing and rioting and it wouldn't be a celebration you know as much as i understand that what the hell kind of guys only movie do we have coming out you know all of the superhero movies have been men i mean sure maybe he man because that one's getting a reboot but even that's just got man right in the title but if if that's the case then she-ra that one should have a couple of all women screenings i don't know but isn't that assuming that that I don't know. It feels like it's assuming that guys can't appreciate... Oh, you, you guys can't appreciate this kind of movie. That's why you're excluded. You know, if if there was a, a men-only screening of Logan, I feel like women would be up in arms about it. Now, see, here's the difference on these. I don't see this, again, coming down to necessarily exclusion, excluding just because of gender. I'm seeing this as celebrating because of who one is. Uh, a good example is... I mean. Actually, this one's kind of off the rails, but it does take place. AMC has an afternoon or morning. It's either 10 a.m. or 2 o'clock in the afternoon. I forget which. On like a Tuesday or a Wednesday that are like a showing of a movie for mothers. Like, you're a mother. You need to take a break. Drop your kids off at daycare. Come here. You get a special ed price. It's going to be all mommies in there. You know, if you need to go in there and just fall asleep in the movie theater, that's fucking fine. But it's a movie screening just for women. But because this is the first female starring, female driven superhero film in decades, but the first one period since the superhero boom really happened, I'm down with it. Because if you can't go to that showing, I don't see the big deal. There's another multiplex, like, probably five minutes that way. Go to that one. And the towns that only have one theater, I can guarantee you, you don't have one of these all-female showings going on. It's like five or ten in the entire country. Oh, no, I know. I'm not saying, like, everywhere's doing it. I'm not trying to say that it's bad or anything. I'm just saying that if there were an all-guys... Because we have the all-women showing of Wonder Woman. We've already, it's already happening. We've already mm-hmm. seen that there's a result. Do you believe that if there was an all guys showing of a movie like Logan or or whatever, that there would be zero response? You'd be zero stupid women calling it sexist? No, no, I don't believe that that would be zero response. I definitely think that there would be a response. Do you think the response would get more traction? Yes. You know what I mean? Yes, I I do. I do think that the response would gain more traction if there was a male only uh, situation like that. And I think the reason that it would probably almost be, and I'm not saying that it is warranted, I'm not for exclusionary, okay? I'm for all-inclusive, and I think that is why I have zero issue with this whatsoever, is because, again, it's not about the exclusionary nature of it, it's about the celebration of something. And I think the reason why it would hold more weight if there wasn't all-guy screening is because all of the other superhero movies have been all-guys. You know, Ant-Man got a movie before Wonder Woman did. Uh, fucking Doctor Strange got one before Storm did. You know, I, well, hell, before Black Widow did. She's a major part of the Avengers. So I think that's why there would be far more blowback about it is because we have all these movies already. And female movies have gotten absolutely nothing. So I think that's why it's such a big deal. Is not because, you know, it's... 
the idea of no boys allowed. I think it's the whole idea of sorority, you know, sisterhood. At yeah. least that's my takeaway from it. And I think that's why I'm celebrating. I think there should be more of them. If only for business and for driving up the profits on this particular intellectual property. Because this movie is crushing it in the box office right now. Which is showing and proving that female starring and female driven movies will sell. Because Hollywood still doesn't seem to have enough faith to say, hey, you put a woman in a cast or you make a woman a central piece of a cast... It's going to make money. It's going to be profitable. Hollywood still seems to have that sexist view of it, which is, and I have a horse in the race too, because I am a huge fan of Brian K. Vaughn. I want more than anything to see why the last man get some sort of film adaptation or television adaptation, hopefully television, because the story is sprawling, but here's the reason it's not going to get made unless movies like this or television shows like this really find a huge audience and really explode is because the whole central thesis of Why the Last Man is it's a gender apocalypse, and the only people alive are one man and his monkey. That's it. All the male animals are dead. All the other men in the world are dead. So aside from one guy, it is an all-female cast. I don't believe that any network is brave enough to do that, because I don't think that any network believes in in an intellectual property like that a dramatic intellectual property like that to do something like that. Despite the fact that we've had Golden Girls, despite the fact that we've had Designing Women, but again, those are comedies. But then again, we've also had Sex in the City, and we've also had Girls. I've got a horse in the race because there are far more female starring and female-driven stories that I like that I don't believe are ever going to get made unless things like this have success. So, I personally think that celebrations like this are warranted because with the success that this movie has i think it's really going to open up a lot more intellectual property and we're going to get a lot of a lot more cool stuff about it so instead of being all upset about oh well i can't go to one theater in the 500 mile radius of where i live go to the other multiplex see the movie anyway it's i'm gonna talk about the movie here in just a couple of minutes and my reaction for it and don't worry it'll be spoiler free but that's, that's my opinion of it. Instead of being upset about it, celebrate it. Celebrate the fact that women finally have a strong female-driven character leading this movie, and it's blowing up. So that's my, that's my opinion of it. Let's read I mean, this email. I mean, I mean his, like, his arguments are ridiculous. And I understand that you say it's celebratory, but it, maybe there's some guys that want to celebrate, you know? Are you saying that... No guy wants to celebrate. You you yourself seem to want to celebrate that, that oh, Wonder absolutely. Woman has come out. Oh, absolutely. But as far as my celebration goes, I mean, I'm not a female, so I don't have that... I don't have that identification with Diana Prince. So, I mean, that part is out of it for me. Okay, that's well, just that's, it. that's I, fair. But I you're... don't have any vested interest in seeing this in an all-gender-encompassed group. As a matter of fact, I would find it kind of weird to be in a sold-out theater filled with guys watching Wonder Woman, because I'm relatively sure somewhere down the row of seats that I'm going to be sitting in, somebody's going to be masturbating, and it's going to be really awkward for everybody. Nobody's going to say anything to them, but we're all going to know. You're going to look to your neighbor, and he's going to look at you, and you guys know. And it's going to happen at least one person in every row. And we're just all going to sit there. We're going to just pretend to keep staring ahead, but we're all going to be feeling really uncomfortable. You think that's not happening in the all-women screenings? Oh, I'm sure it is. <laughs> exactly. They do it with poise and grace. <laughs> if you say There's so. There's <laughs> nothing beautiful about a man masturbating. So what do you think? You ready to read this email? Sure. All right. <clears throat> I hope every man will boycott Austin and do what he can to diminish Austin and to cause damage to the city's image. The theater that pandered to the sexism typical of women will, I hope, regret its decision, okay? The notion of a woman hero is a fine example of woman's eagerness to accept the appearance of achievement without actual achievement. Women learn from an early age to value makeup that that it's okay to pretend that you are greater than you actually are. Women pretend to that they do not know that only men serve in combat because they are content to have an easier ride. 
Women gladly accept gold medals at the Olympics for coming in 10th and competing only against second-class athletes. Name something invented by a woman. Achievements by... Oh, Jesus, my eyes are fogging here. I know, it's awful. <laughs> it really is awful here. I can't even continue doing this in impression mode, okay? No, I wouldn't. I can't, yeah, you, you I can't even to, continue You just this. have to get through it. It's, it's pretty awful. As I said, the, his arguments are terrible. The question of whether we can have an equal event is not necessarily a terrible question. But... All right, name something invented by a woman. Achievements in... Uh, achievements by the second-rate gender pale in comparison to virtually everything great in human history was accomplished by men, not women. If Austin does not host a men's-only counter-event, I will never visit, visit Austin and will welcome its deterioration. And I will not forget that Austin is best known for Charles Whitman. Does Austin stand for gender equality or for kissing up to women? Don't bother to respond. I already know the answer. I do not hate women. I hate their rampant hypocrisy and the hypocrisy of the quote-unquote women's movement. Women do not want gender equality. They want more for women. Don't bother to respond because I am sure your cowardice will generate nothing worth reading. Sincerely, Richard A. Amaduri. And I think it's fine to say that guy's name because it's all over the internet as it is already. It's weird. He multiple times writes, don't bother to respond. If Which you know looking, he yeah, wants to respond. If, yeah, if you're not looking for a response, why bother writing it in the first place? Exactly. If you don't want the response, then just let the person respond and delete the email. Seriously. I, what's, what's wrong with you, friend? You're, you're literally just putting in don't bother to respond because you want to appear like you're taking the moral superiority. You're taking the moral high ground. When in actuality, we all know you're refreshing your browser every 15 seconds. Did he write back yet? Did he write back yet? I mean, that made me feel uncomfortable as a guy to read that. That was really frightening. So I'm, I'm trying to figure out where he's from because if he's like he's not from Austin, so he's yeah. writing the Austin mayor to say that he's not going to come to Austin because of something that a private theater is choosing to do. Like, hit the threads don't make a whole lot of sense. Not even at all. So I just so, want to know where he is so I can never go there. <laughs> yeah. Um, what's your name again? Richard Amaduri. Can you please, if you're listening, respond to us and tell us where you're from so we know never to go there. And please, please, please don't let it be Buffalo. I don't think right. it's Buffalo. We should look uh, it up. I wonder if he has a Facebook. I would imagine it's got to be deactivated by right now. or like You cooking. would assume. Right. You really would assume. Um, so Steve Adler replied back, Adrian, you want to take this email here? Oh, I'll try. This is three paragraphs. Like you had one giant paragraph. This is three paragraphs and I have to do it in Russian. You don't have to do it in <laughs> Russian, uh, but you want on. to. I do want to. I, I feel like I have to, it does not start out with hello, but I feel like I have to say hello to get into that mindset for some reason. Okay. I'll allow it. All right. Yeah. Hello, dear Mr. Emiduri. I am writing to alert you that your email account has been hacked by an unfortunate and usually hostile individual. Please remedy your account security right away, lest this person's uninformed and sexist rantings give you a bad name. After all, we men have to look out for each other. Can you imagine if someone thought that you didn't know women could serve in our combat units now without exclusion? What if someone thought you didn't know that the women invented medical syringes, life rafts, fire escapes, central and solar heating, and the wartime communication systems for radio-controlling torpedoes that laid the technological foundations for everything from Wi-Fi to GPS and beer. Oh, I like beer. Oh, yeah. And also, side note, I find it funny that they invented life rafts. Life rafts, that's probably why they get on there first. I think that's just like, you invented it? Okay, you get on first. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Right on, man. Back, back to the email. And I hesitate to imagine how embarrassed you'd be if someone thought you were upset that a private business was realizing a business opportunity by reserving one screening this weekend for women to see a superhero movie. You and I are serious men of substance with little time for the delicate sensitivities displayed by the pitiful creature who maligned your good name and sterling character by writing that abysmal email. I trust the news that your email account has been hacked, does not cause you undue alarm, and wish you well in securing your account. 
And in the future, should your travels take you to Austin, please know that everyone is welcome here. Even people like those who wrote that email, whose views are an embarrassment to modernity, decency, and common sense. Yours sincerely, Ruski Edler. <laughs> nice. Well done. Oh, and by the way, other things invented by women, chocolate chip cookies, uh, windshield wipers, <laughs> Monopoly, fire escapes, dishwasher, square-bottomed paper bag. Yeah, all things invented by women. So, thanks, ladies. Hashtag women appreciation. Yeah, I... Get- I- I'm doing the hashtag thing that we do and couldn't be models here. No worries. It's just, yeah, I mean, again, his points are awful. But I think it's a fair question to say if there's, if there's, can be a women's only screening, can we have a men's only screening? And if not, why? Yeah, I mean, I mean that's, that's like just a simple, fair question. Not yeah, like, it, not attacking, just... not like, oh, inferior gender. And, oh, we're so much better or something. Like, I get it. Yeah. I mean, I understand the question, and I under, you know, I guess a better way to word that, I understand the sentiment on it, especially for argument's sake, but I think the question that I would counter with is, why would you feel that you need one? Um, I already brought up the masturbation thing, and I said that out of humor and out of, you know, poking fun at the situation, but I'm not really joking that much about it. Um... As far as women go, I mean, it's been a decade of the superhero boom. There has not been one female superhero movie. Every other one has been a male-driven superhero movie. So I I understand the need for women to feel that they should celebrate, especially in an industry that was catering almost exclusively to men and in a cinematic universe that caters almost exclusively to men. I understand why the celebration would be taken so big with women. And it, I guess it really did hit me, like I said, because I was in that drive-in and I'm hearing women cheering and my wife bursting into tears saying, oh my God, I've waited so long for this. And she didn't mean waiting so long for Wonder Woman. She meant waited so long to see a superhero that's leading a film that she can look up to or look at that screen and identify with. You know, for us in the possibility of having a daughter at some point, for her to be able to take our daughter to a movie and have her be able to look up and see someone that looks like her, you know, at least with her gender and she's kicking ass and being a badass and she's leading the movie. So I get it. So it's a fair question to ask. Why can't we have a males only screening of that? But I would counter as to why do you think you need one? And why would you want one? I guess that's what I would counter with. And I can see what you're saying, but then I guess the other counter would be, so if you don't uh, equivalent, if you don't think a male-only screening of Wonder Woman is equivalent to a female-only screening of Wonder Woman because mm-hmm. it's female, these guys watching female, but that, you know, there wasn't any male-only screenings of any of the male superhero movies. They were always all-inclusive, you know? And so, you know, it, I, I, I see the argument. I get it. Uh, I don't think it's necessarily a good one. But I think it's fair to have that discussion. And Mm -hmm. uh, we were also talking earlier. It's like, you know, you can say that it's you can blame the movie studios all you want for there not being a a female driven superhero movie. But I mean, if you look at the source material, when all these comics are becoming popular back in the 50s, 60s, you know, the, the superheroes in the comic books in those times were pretty much male dominated then. So they didn't have a lot of strong women to draw from. I mean, right. They only had a handful. I mean, for every 10 to 20 guys, there was one girl. You're right about that. Yeah. So, and you could argue that it was sexist back then, or you could argue that it was marketed towards nerdy guys because it probably was, you know, there's lots of potential reasons for it. True. Uh, my rebuttal to that is when you are going with more modern creations like Deadpool or arguably Doctor Strange, you know, Ant-Man, you know, my things that weren't created in the 30s, 40s and 50s, you know, things that were created later, 70s, 80s, 90s, you have a plethora of women to draw from at that point and more being created, it seems, every single year at that point. So when does there reach a point where you can't really use that as an argument? I mean, especially using more obscure guys like Ant-Man, and you still haven't given Black Widow, who was already introduced, 
her own solo film. There well, comes a point where you kind of have to tilt your head to the side. Well, you keep coming back to this Black Widow getting her own solo film, but Hawkeye mm. hasn't had his own solo film. You well, know, first it's... off, thank God. <laughs> well, well but, I mean, that's the reaction to Hawkeye is thank God no Hawkeye movie, but why, Jesus, is there no Black Widow movie? I mean, they're both members of the Avengers. Absolutely so. true. Absolutely true. Um, on one hand, it is the double standard. Black Widow is a female. There's no female stories. That's leaving out an entire demographic. Um, the other side is Hawkeye arguably had the only solo only storyline in Age of Ultron. Everybody else was ensemble only. He was the only one that had a personal story in that movie. Natalia Romanoff still has yet to have one in any of the movies that she's made an appearance. So you could find the argument to be made that Age of Ultron was technically Hawkeye's quasi standalone. Natalia Romanoff still has not had that solo ambition, even role in any of these movies. She's had a quasi romance with Bruce Banner, but even that was played very much in the back burner as opposed to Hawkeye's family story. I mean, the, the, the argument to that would be Black Widow is a spy, so her past isn't really meant to be known, you know? And I think she's gone through and she doesn't want her past to be known. She was initially with the Russians and the crazy experiments and a lot of this other stuff. So, I mean, mm -hmm. uh, that that's a one potential argument. The other one is, you know, we keep coming back to people like Ant-Man and Doctor Strange, but, I mean, we have to remember that the Marvel Universe is building towards something. Like, it's not... I don't think it makes sense to just throw in a movie that has a female protagonist that doesn't because everything's building towards infinity wars right now. Everything right. has been, yes. you know, it's been slow, you know, it, it's taken multiple tiers. Like Iron Man one doesn't build immediately to infinity wars. No, Iron Man starts building towards the Marvel universe and building the Avengers and Avengers starts building towards, can we be a team and civil war and then civil wars, you know, like, they have something that they're approaching. So I don't know that it's fair to be like, oh, well, there's no Storm movie. It's like, well, okay, but there's a lot of other people that don't have movies as well. We're we're like, we're going um, in a direction for a specific story. True. Storm is actually a non-issue non with that because the X-Men are over in Fox. They're not really dealing with the Infinity War. Well, I mean, take your pick, you know. You, you, can, you can put any name you want in there, you know. True. Um... Counterpoint to that. Natalia Romanoff had... She was a spy. You're right. I'm, I'm going to touch on that aspect of your response first. She was a spy. True. Which makes her backstory far more compelling than a lot of the other characters that we've had. Paul Rudd's character in Ant-Man was a really crappy sneak thief that just happened to find a suit. With Black Widow, we have the potential of a James Bond-style fucking spy movie that happens to have a female in it who's very attractive, very cool looking suit that eventually stops working with the Russians and gets acquired by S.H.I.E.L.D. That's a pretty damn badass backstory. We don't need to know about her childhood growing up or anything like that. Give me Spy Black Widow being converted over to S.H.I.E.L.D. and I'm a happy boy. That was a movie that could have been in Phase 1 with Iron Man, with Thor, with Captain America. And if you want to say that, maybe give us a Hawkeye movie as well. I mean, he popped up for the very first time in Thor. Black Widow popped up for the very first time in Iron Man 2. So, I mean, you really could have had all five Avengers right there in the first wave. I mean, for I mean, it's easy to make that argument, but I mean, we're, we're playing with fake money, you know? We are, yeah. You know, and, and I don't think anyone would have predicted the explosion of the Marvel Universe, you know, as as great as it has become. Ah, you know, Kevin it, it, Feige knew. He Kevin Feige knew. He had Walt Disney's cryogenically frozen head sitting right behind him whispering anti-Semitic rants the entire time. So, you know, I don't know. It's, <laughs> I think it's it's really easy to to criticize because that's what we do every week. <laughs> but uh, yes, yeah. Yeah, I well don't know. We're not, we don't bring the pop culture news. We don't bring the news. We just comment on it. We're commentators more than anything. We just react to what's going on. And we bring our own spin to it. You know, I, and I appreciate your viewpoint, you know, at least taking the counterpoint to it to give the conversation a little bit of, you know, levity. 
nothing about this whatsoever has upset me in any way, shape, or form as far as the all women screenings. Oh yeah, uh, me neither. I, I understand you playing devil's advocate for the sake of conversation on the show, you know, and also I just like to argue. So. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And uh, honestly, I'm really not even sure where you officially stand on this. Not there's not one thing about this all, all women screening on this that bothers me in any way, shape, or form. Like I said, I really do celebrate it. I don't care one way or the other about it. You know, I think it's an absolutely awesome idea. These studios are selling out. The theaters are making money. Fans are having a fun time. The major- the vast majority of people don't care. It just seems that, you know, they call themselves male rights activists. I like to call them male supremacists because <laughs> you're not an activist for my rights. Let me Let me put it that way. Those seem to be the people that are really being outspoken and bitchy about it. You know, I understand the counterpoints and I understand the arguments to be made, but I don't care. You know what I mean? Actually, I feel like, you know, it's it's a good thing to talk about. It's an interesting debate to have no matter what side you fall on. Right. I think it's important to be able to see that, you know, while that guy was an idiot and the reason he was upset was stupid, it, it's a fair discussion to say, okay, well, there's women's only screenings for stuff. Where's the men's only screenings for stuff? If it's not there, can we consider that to be equal? Are we trying to be equal? What What is, you know, what is our goal? What is, uh, what do we want as a society? Blah, blah, blah. You know, you can, you can dig super deep. I don't think a women's only screening of Wonder Woman is any reason to start banging the inequality drum. Not even at all. You know, I, there are plenty of things that if... <laughs> If they came to pass, I would be like, okay, I thought everybody wanted equality because this is truly tipping the scales in one direction or the other. Um, An all-women's viewing of Wonder Woman, like you just said, that that's that's not on the scale. That's like, dude, seriously, people are having fun. It's a superhero movie. It's the first female superhero movie. You know, that's why it's such a big deal is... It's the first. Oh, should there be a male-only screening of Deadpool? Well, I don't see the point. That it's going to be Deadpool 2 soon, and every other superhero has been a dude. So, really, where's the celebration? Well, let me let me kind of interrupt your train of thought there. Would you be in favor of all women screenings of The Force Awakens because the primary female protagonist? protagonist is female? Yeah, I would be in favor for that. Okay. I mean, I you're consistent. I would be in favor for that. Yeah, I would absolutely be in favor for that, 100%. And furthermore, Black Panther is already confirmed for uh, release in a couple of years as well, because there hasn't been any uh, black characters that have had their own solo film, to my knowledge. I mean, you've had Nick Fury, sure, uh, but he hasn't had his own solo film. Black Dynamite? What is that one called? I think it's Black Dynamite. Excuse me? That's black Dynamite? Oh, <laughs> I'm like, I, I'm confused here. And the funny thing is, We've had both of these um, sections of the population represented in the Marvel Netflix shows already. Yep. We've gotten Luke Cage before we've gotten Black Panther, and we've had Jessica Jones before Wonder Woman. And we have a disabled guy. And we have a disabled guy, yes, because Matt Murdock is blind. We're just missing a homosexual character. Although I guess got foggy. So <laughs> nice, very nice. Great I minds love that we made like. the same joke at the same time. That's a great. So again, Netflix <laughs> is pulling ahead of the pack as far as the cinematic world goes. But enough talk about this bullshit. Thoughts and opinions on Wonder Woman. I got to see it again opening night. I saw it at the drive-in. This movie was fantastic. This movie. That's another reason why I'm all in favor of the celebration, because not only is it the first female superhero movie, it's the first female superhero movie that's fucking good. It is really, really good. This easily has skated into the top five superhero movies of all time. Um, This movie is right up there with Logan. It's right up there with Deadpool. It's with Dark Knight. I would probably say as far as qualms and criticisms go, the movie was shot a bit dark. But it's also nice to see the DC Universe has finally figured out, hey, more colors exist. It's a colorful movie, but it seemed to be shot a bit dark. 
Um, there were a couple of points right in the middle that did kind of seem to drag a little bit, so I would easily put it in the top four, top five. It would probably be number four or five, in my opinion, but still easily one of the best ones ever made. Um, there is a fight sequence. This is I'm not going to give any spoilers in this review. I'm going to keep it nice and short and sweet because God knows my mouth runs like a flapper on a duck's ass, and eventually I'm going to spoil some. But just a couple of points that I wanted to touch on. There is a battle on Paradise Island right at the beginning of the movie. And you may have seen it in the trailers and you're like, oh my God, that's got to be in the climax. It's not, dude. It's not at all. That is right out on Front Street. It's in the first 10, 15 minutes of the film. And it it made me want to watch Xena. It was one of the best shot fight sequences that I've seen in a long time. It was reminiscent of 300. It was reminiscent of the best parts of Batman v Superman. It it was just so well shot. It was so well choreographed. It blew away the choreography of Iron Fist. But then again, everything blows away the choreography of Iron Fist. I'm sorry, Danny Rand. I actually like that show. Um, S- Steve Trevor, I thought, was played to perfection. Her entire little group of misfits played absolutely amazing. Uh, the scene in the trenches... When you watch the movie, you'll know what I'm talking about. Brought a tear to my eye. It was incredible to see Wonder Woman co- really coming about and coming to in World War II. Or, excuse me, World War One. I. I meant to say World War One, and I... The reason is this. Because every movie seems to deal exclusively with World War II. Captain America was World War II. Band of Brothers, World War II. It almost feels like there is an underappreciation of World War One, which... Many historians still refer to it as the seminal catastrophe. Without World War I, we don't have the superpower structure in the world that we have even today. We don't get to World War II. We don't have the Cold War. We don't nearly bring the world to the brink of total annihilation. Everything literally happened with the falling of dominoes and with a poor game of chess. It it was insane how it actually worked out. And before the smoke cleared, a generation was left dead. But everybody seems to forget about that war because World War II, there's never been a time in recent memory where there was such a clear division of good and evil. So everybody seems to, uh, with the Nazis especially, everybody seems to gravitate toward World War II. It was amazing to see World War I represented in this film. Because here you have the trench warfare, you have the advent of chemical warfare, and all of these things play a factor in this movie. It was just, it was an incredible setting to put this movie in. Um, I give this movie two very enthusiastic golden lassoes right in the air, just screaming and waving around like fucking mad. That's what I give this film. And I'm going to cut it off here before I start really spoiling shit, because I want to so bad. So... If you have not seen Wonder Woman, you need to go see this flick. If you're a female and there's still um, all women showings of this movie, for the love of God, fucking go. Have fun. Have a blast. Take your girlfriends. Um, If you're a guy, take the stick out of your ass. Go see the movie in the Cineplex. Come on. I'm sure there's one right down the street from you. Uh, Incredible movie, man. I highly recommend this film. Highly recommend it. If you loved Logan, you're going to love this one. My review? Yes. One out of one, Invisible Planes, because I have not seen it yet. (laughs) Fair enough, man. Um, I really think that you're going to love this movie. I really do. There are some pacing issues, uh, which is why it's going to be further back than the other ones. But it's still handily in the top superhero movies ever made. It's still in the family of Logan and Deadpool and Dark Knight. It's just clearly behind them. So that sounds sexist to me. I don't know. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, man. Um, well, I'm going to call our main topic, the discussion that we just had sexism in the comic book movies that we've just had there. So I'm going to call that what our main topic is, but we had an original main topic for you guys that we're going to touch on here. Um, and that is what cinematic universe do you most likely want to see? So We're going to have that be our main topic. We're going to have this be our final thoughts, I think I'm going to call it. And we're going to kick it over to you guys out there as well, the listeners. What kind of cinematic universe that doesn't exist yet or hasn't started yet do you want to see? Um, Adrian, you've got a couple of things that you want to see. And God knows I have a couple I want to see here. What do you got for me? 
So I've got two that uh, I think would be really interesting to see. They're both video game properties. Oh, I love um, it. So I would like to see. I don't know if they could pull it off. Because, you know, sometimes when you, you make properties based off certain types of games, they don't turn out that well. And uh, Super Mario would, Brothers? Are you talking about Super Mario Brothers? I'm actually not talking about Super Mario Brothers, but the movie. You're movies, a little bit talking about Super Mario Brothers. More like. Street Fighter and Mortal oh, Kombat God. Annihilation. I want to see Soul Calibur. I think they could do fuck it. Fuck yes. Soul Calibur oh, would be fuck interesting. fuck yes. I don't know how you do it. I don't know how you do a super... Not a superhero. Wow. We've been talking about that for a while. Uh, I don't know how you do a fighting game movie well. Like, well. The original feel, Mortal Kombat, I didn't think, did it poorly. No, it wasn't I think bad. it could have been bad. I think it could have been better... But I don't think they did it poorly. Annihilation was a bad movie. That was just a was bad, bad, bad movie. I feel like I feel like you have to do. You have to either focus on a, a group of people or on one of them, and you have to focus on that person's journey. You can't just focus on everybody and show a bunch of different fight scenes. You know, right. That's not enough story. That's just people fighting for you, to fight. You know, which is there, the, it's just the game. But yeah, there was a um, anime film that came out a bunch of years ago. Uh, that was a film adaptation of Fatal Fury. That I thought really did well. I thought that they really hit the nail right on the head with that movie. I have not seen it. Um, so. Again, it is an anime. It's not a live action. But I thought that the story and the way they presented that film was... You hit the nail right on the head. And I think that that was an, an, yet another example of a fighting game done well. So, Soul Calibur, I would absolutely watch that. And, uh, dude, if you could take that movie and cross it over with like one of the original Tekkens... And almost had like a... Uh, a fighting game cinematic universe call it whatever you want like a fists of fury cinematic universe dude i would be a so about that that would be cool i do like tech and it's been a long time since i played i think i played four or five was the most recent and they're up to like seven just came out right dude so. could you imagine scorpion versus yoshimitsu or yojimbo or whatever that skeleton dude from tekken was yeah yeah that'd be interesting oh my god Fuck you, take all my money. Take all my money, take Brooke's money, take some of Adrian's money. I don't know how much money he's going to give you on his own, but I'll make sure he gives you some. Dude, oh my god, I would watch the shit out of that. Or but again, the, as long as it's done well. The devil character from Tekken, uh, like the Jin devil versus like... Oh, yes, like yes. Goro or something. Fuck Just yes. titans going at it. Fuck Yes. Oh my god, I would watch that so hard right in the butt. I love it, man. <laughs> Alright, what's your even uh even like a Darkstalkers. I think they did I think they had a Darkstalkers cartoon. I can't remember. Darkstalkers I don't know. I'm not sure. They have a lot of interesting characters one. in that. Anyways, that, that one just popped into my head. The right other on. one that I would like to see. And mm. I feel like to do this one properly, I don't think you could have it all in the, the era that the games were initially set in. I think it'd be great to have like flashbacks and and just kind of all over the place with time uh, not quite like a little bit like assassin's creed but not exactly um but i'd love to see like a tenchu stealth assassins oh yes i miss those games i have not seen one since i think ps2 i think was the last one i'm pretty sure yeah i don't think there was one at all for the next gen consoles yeah oh that would be really good I feel like you'd have to get, like, governments and stuff involved and corruption. Mm. And so, like, you have somebody training much the way that people trained to be ninjas or, or, or assassins yeah, exactly. back in the old day. But then you bring it into the modern day, so you have to use old techniques and in modern situations. And I think that'd be really interesting. It'd be like a spy thriller assassin show or movie. You know, they tried to make something like that very recently. It was called Assassin's Creed. Did you watch that movie? I did not, but I haven't played any of the games for Assassin's Creed either. Um, a couple of the Assassin's Creed games are pretty good. Not all of them by any yeah. stretch of the imagination. Yeah, that's right. And the movie, the movie was not awful. It was not terrible. It was one of the better video game adaptations out there. Unfortunately, that's not saying much. Yeah, uh, Double Dragon, Street Fighter, Mortal Kombat Annihilation, Super Mario Brothers. Like, yeah, yeah. better than most. <laughs> yeah. 
Um, I would say that it's probably on the level of World of Warcraft, or rather, just Warcraft, which Never again saw that one. <laughs> it, it was surprisingly decent. It was not wonderful, but it was surprisingly decent. Uh, it's kind of bad when video game adaptation movies are kind of like at their pinnacle with the Silent Hill movies, because even they were not great compared to the games. Yeah, but neither of the movies were horrible. Especially the original one. It was actually pretty decent. But it's kind of sad where that's your bar. But anyway, my point is... I think that the Assassin's Creed movie could have taken a lot of notes from what you were bringing up right there. As far as how you make a movie based around stealth. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So... No, I think that that's really cool. I would definitely love to see either of those, especially the fighting game one. Oh yeah, my god. So, that would I be so just, badass. That would be those are the ones that popped into my head just like, "Oh, I miss Soul Calibur. Oh, I miss Tenchu." <laughs> um, one of the ones that I have written down about is just because he cannot seem to get anything made, although Lock and Key is still coming in a big bad way, and we do have horns. I want to see the Joe Hilliverse. Don't know what you're going to call it, but Stephen King's got his Stephen king averse you know? I mean, it's and it's all coming together in the Dark Tower movie. And Castle Rock is a TV show that's in production right now. Mark Bernardin from Fat Man and Batman is one of the key writers on it. Uh, that's going to be a central focal point for the Stephen King television and movie universe. Because lots of his work is all tied together. And the Dark Tower book series is kind of its through line like everything seems to pop in there the man in black is randall flag uh it the devourer of worlds is a central figure in the dark tower series as well i want to see his son joe hill have something like that because lots of his books reference themselves i would like to see more come out cinematically from him you know see a TV or movie version of Nosferatu where they reference the Treehouse of the Mind from Horns, you know, or the uh, Midnight Highway from Heart Shaped Box. I don't think that's the name of the road that they were on, but you get my point. That's what I want to see. I really want more Joe Hill stuff and I want them to all tie together because I, I, I love his writing so much. I just want all of that to be encompassed. <coughs> And then finally, the last thing I have written down here is there have been rumors about this since I was like 13 years old and nothing has ever come of it. And I want it so bad that I would sell Adrian into white slavery. I want the Ashiverse. Uh, Pokemon? No, not Pokemon. Ash. Ash versus the Evil Dead. Ash Williams. I want the Ashiverse. Mashup. Ash Ketchum versus the Evil Dead. I would watch the shit out of that. <laughs> he actually just catches them. He catches zombies in his poke- Pokeballs. <laughs> I would love that. Pikachu tries to kill Ash. He shoots out a quip. Oh, yeah? Electrify this or something like that and just slices through Pikachu. You know, he's flipping out over Charizard and Charmander. That'd be fucking awesome. But I've been hearing rumors about Freddy versus Jason versus Ash since I was like 13 years old. Or Ash versus... Child's Play, or Ash versus Pumpkinhead, or Ash versus just Jason, Ash versus Freddy. I want an Ash versus Freddy. I want a wisecracking, old fat fuck fighting the demon of dreams. That's what I want. I want more horror movie icons that have basically kind of gone the way of the dodo bird as far as their actual scares. I want them to jump into the Ash universe. Because there's so much you can do with the Deadites, but there's so much more that you could do if Jason Voorhees just happened to pop into Ash vs. the Evil Dead Season 3. Or Chucky just happens to be in, like, the house that he ends up trying to board up and hold up in as the Deadites are coming. God, I fucking want that. Like, the legacy monster universe. You know what I mean? Yeah. Wouldn't that be fucking amazing? It would be the keys to our childhood as far as horror movies go, all combined into one with one central focal point. Ash being the everyman. God, I want this so bad. I I think those are better than mine. Although I do have one more for you. Oh, here it comes. Hit me up, Adrian Steve. Okay, so it's Crypt of the Necrodancer, and every season, or I don't know, it ends with an epic 
dance fight choreography. Huh? Huh? I don't see how that's a cinematic universe, but I would watch the shit out of that. Maybe not a cinematic universe, but like the beginning of something, you know, right? Like we were just talking about expanded universe was my understanding. Well, yeah, expanded universe, yes. So yeah, turn it into a film, turn it into uh, the Netflix series. I I would happily watch that Crypt of the Necro Dancer. I think that that is such a unique idea for a video game. I think that that would make a great addition to something like Netflix or Hulu or Amazon or something like that. I think that would be a great addition. I think that would be so cool. It would never happen, though. I'd be surprised. Probably I'd be not. surprised. Yeah. Um, you know, speaking of Netflix, last thing we'll touch on and then we'll get out of here. Netflix has finally joined the ranks of other television providers and has finally canceled some shows. I heard that's something that they're actually pushing for more of in the future. They said we should be taking more risks and we should be canceling more shows, you know. I'm not sure how I feel about that, even though sometimes I agree. I don't know how I feel about that, especially seeing as though both shows that they got rid of are shows that I enjoyed. Of course. Um, yeah. Uh, it didn't seem to matter with streaming shows, but I, I guess the curse is expanding. Uh, the Get Down and Sense8. They've both gotten the axe from Netflix. So what we got is what we're getting. And I, you know, it's a conversation to always have right now with shows on network television about how they could always find their second home on Netflix or Hulu. What do you do when Netflix or Hulu cancels you? If, um, if a show that's a Netflix original gets canceled, do they immediately go over to Hulu as an original series? You know, it's... I don't think so, because I feel like Netflix would own all the the rights to it yeah exactly exactly it's just i get why they are doing it and i don't completely disagree because i'm sorry house of cards it's gotten pretty bad but the get down and sense eight i really thought that they were both strong shows i thought they were both very very good shows but they're both gone now which is disappointing gone 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 I guess I uh, don't need to start watching them. Yeah, I recommend it for Sense8, though. I didn't finish Season 2 yet, but hopefully it wraps up in a satisfying way. From what I've heard, it doesn't. Now I'm even more depressed. Uh, uh, Sorry to tell you that. I was like, well, I know I don't have to watch Sense8, because people are clamoring, like, can we at least get an ending? I was hoping to end the show on such a high note, and we get this. So depressed now. I win. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> you treated it you treated the you treated the sunny disposition all right so that's going to take it out of us guys um that's all that's all the news that's fit to print that's all of our conversations uh adrian running counterpoint me running fanboy on fangirl stuff um hopefully you guys enjoyed this episode if you like what we do if you want to support us keep the lights on keep the podcast free we really appreciate it if you go over to patreon.com slash artful gremlins donate whatever whatever you feel is appropriate because we've got early access to all of our shows up there when applicable when i can actually get them on there in time um and a bunch of bonus content that's going to be showing up there relatively soon um we've got a couple of things up there now we got more that's coming in the near future and all of that stuff's going to be up for pay what you want it's a monthly donation site if you feel like what we're doing is worth a buck two bucks a month Hey, every little bit helps, and we appreciate you guys. We appreciate each and every one of you. If you don't feel like we're worth that, or if you don't have that, that's not a problem. We're still going to be coming to you guys free every single week. Please remember to like, subscribe, uh, and especially review us and rate us on iTunes. Because every single one of those, they shoot us higher in the charts where more people can find us. And you can't be a nerdy Namicon hipster if we don't blow up. And that's on you guys. You guys can make that happen. Then you can be like... Pfft. I knew Robbie and Adrian before they were huge. I'm a nerdy before they were hipster. Huge. Before they were huge. So huge. It's incredible. It's unbelievable. Um, if you want to email us, like Eric did, like a bunch of pe- other people are already, you can email us nerdynomicon at gmail.com. Or you can tweet at us at nerdynomicon. Uh, that's going to be it for us, guys. Um, make sure you check out some of our other shows, Couldn't Be Models, coming to you guys every single Monday. Um, check out our friends over at Synthaholics Podcast, our friends at Irrational Fears, and we're in June right now, so make sure you uh, subscribe to YouTube.com slash Nerdynomicon, because Holly's going to be starting up that channel this month. 
And we're going to be starting out with a couple of slower things, but we're going to be getting crazy over there, man. She's been having a lot of fun with that, and Adrian's been working on the banner. Yeah, trying. Trying out some new things. <laughs> working on some stuff. You know. You know. I'm going to shut up now, guys. So until next week, I've been Robbie. And I've been Adrian. Let's close the fucking book. <laughs>